Well, they're finally here. I'm happy to say uh, that my 3.2 volt, 280 amp hour set of four LifePo4 battery cells have finally arrived. I did take uh, time to examine them carefully and as you know there is a question as to whether we're getting grade A or grade B cells when we purchase these types of cells from China and some of the giveaways might be damage to the terminals, uh, what looks to be replaced wrappers on the outside of the cases and possibly uh, some bulging or concerns with the shape of the cells. Uh, I've taken a good look at these cells and first thing I did was inspect all the terminals. They were in good shape. Some very light scratches but I understand that's to be expected because they do get charged obviously uh, before they're sent out from the factory. I did notice however that uh, one of these cells, and I've labeled it number four, as you can see one of the first things I did was label all four of the cells so I could keep track of them over time. Uh, number four has a little bit of a bulge to it and I also noticed that when I checked the initial voltage on these that the first three, one, two, and three, all came in at 3.29 volts which is about exactly what I'd expect. Number four came in upon delivery at 3.34 volts, so a bit higher than the other three. So that does give me concern. There might be a mismatch in these cells. They may have come from different batches, and I'll have to carefully monitor that when I begin the process of top balancing these cells and getting ready to commission them. You'll also notice that I have uh, clearly indicated the positive and negative terminals on these batteries. They are exactly the opposite of what we expect based on our own conventions here in the States. The black terminals are in fact the positive terminals and the lighter colored terminals are the negative. So to make sure there's no mistake I have absolutely labeled these. Some other things I'm going to be doing uh, here quickly is getting ready to prepare to top balance this by attaching the BMS and for those of you who aren't aware a BMF stands for battery management system. I've chosen the 150 amp hour uh, daily BMS. It's a uh, BMS that's ready for implementation using a 4S or 4 series 12 volt battery. Uh, again this one uh, will handle 150 amps maximum uh, which is in concert with what I'm hoping to do by way of using that um, new stove top that I've talked about, the induction cooktop uh, that will draw at the max approximately 150 amps. I've also chosen to pair this, since it's not a Bluetooth module, uh, by way of a common connection between uh, these wires and harnesses I've created with an ISDT BatGo battery monitor. Uh, this will connect on the outside of my case when it's all established and allow me to monitor the individual uh, cell voltage and the battery pack cell voltage. There are Bluetooth models of this DALI BMS uh, and I've chosen to go with a little different approach using an external model, model uh, BatGo battery monitor that I can plug in. The other thing that uh, I have done going back to the battery terminals uh, is replace the screws that came with this for attaching uh, any terminals uh, to the or bus bars to the terminals. Uh, many people have noted when they've bought these that the very small screws that come with the cells have very few threads and there is a question as to whether they would do a good job of securing the bus bars and any other connections that you make. So most people have recommended, and I've chosen to go this route also, to get some grub screws. These grub screws have Allen or hex key um, ability to attach them. There are replacement nuts I've used, and also larger washers to get a better connection when I attach these bus bars uh, to the battery and get ready for charging this in series and that will be my first step will be charging this uh, battery in series to bring it up to approximately 14 volts more or less we'll talk about that in the next video so next steps are top balancing but so far I'm uh, relatively pleased the three out of four cells came in uh, appearing to be in very good shape 
Cell number four, a little bit of bulging that concerns me, and it's higher in voltage upon delivery. Uh, again, we'll be monitoring that carefully as we top balance this pack and uh, get ready for implementation of this system within the solar power generator uh, that you've seen so much about in previous videos. Okay, I have finished the process of attaching the BMS to the battery, and I'm quite happy to say that uh, using these M6 grub screws, and they're 20 millimeters each, and all of them are stainless steel, um, gave me lots of room to attach both the bus bars and these additional ring terminals for the connections between the BMS and the battery monitor. Uh, so things are looking pretty good so far. Um, upon checking out the battery monitor, and I'm not surprised to find this, uh, you'll notice that there is some differentiation. And we're talking about a difference of 48 millivolts between the four, the four cells. And as I had mentioned, I was worried about cell number four. It came upon delivery at 3.34 volts. The other three cells were all approximately 3.29 and uh, that's what they're showing right now. So this pack is assembled in series as you can see the bus bars are connecting positive and negative terminals in three different locations. This would be your most negative terminal and this is your most positive terminal on what is now a 12 volt battery pack. Um, after Attaching the battery management system, I took the time to confirm using my voltmeter that all of the connections at this terminal were accurate. You want to absolutely check that the connections are in the right order. If you're not familiar with how to attach a BMS, there's plenty of good videos on YouTube that can help you do that. But you most certainly do not want to attach these harnesses. Uh, to either the battery monitor or certainly your BMS if they're not wired properly in the right sequence. So absolutely take the time to do that. I'm making sure I do that by carefully following some plans I've developed. And I have, as I mentioned, put together a multiple page set of instructions as to how to set up these batteries. And I am following it to the letter to make sure that there are any problems. And uh, again, I'll be happy to share this with all of you at a point in the future after I get this set up and in use in my solar generator. The next step is to start charging this 12 volt battery pack up. The reason we're going to do that is that uh, in the next step where we reassemble this pack in parallel, we don't want to have to charge uh, up to the 280 amp hours uh, without doing some charging first in series. That'll help to minimize the amount of time it takes to bring those individual cells connected in parallel up to approximately 3.5, 3.55 volts per cell. So again, it's in series right now in 4S and what we'll be doing is charging this up to about 14 volts which would be 3.5 volts per cell. Uh, I might go a little bit higher than that but we'll monitor this and see how things go as we're able to see how each cell is behaving using that ISDT backgo battery monitor. So as you can see I have now attached a benchtop power supply to this battery pack. Again the battery pack is assembled in series 4S and the goal is to upon this initial charge take the battery pack up to about 14 volts. You may know that these cells, uh, the individual 3.2 volt cells, have a maximum voltage that is safe of approximately 3.65 volts. We're going to take the pack to 14 volts, which would be 3.5 volts per cell. So as you can see, right now the pack is charging at 13.61 volts. Uh, there's 3.19 amps or 43.41 watts being delivered to the battery pack at present. And you can hear the fan just kick on for the bench top power supply. I've been monitoring the pack using this ISDT battery monitor and you may not be able to see those numbers clearly but 
what it is showing is that there is now a 77 millivolt difference between the cells. Clearly cell number four is well above the other three in the charge cycle and that is of concern. We have to close that gap between the four cells and that is the process of top balancing. So again at present we're charging this pack in series after we've brought the number four cell and the pack up closer to its maximum. Uh, so 14 volts for the pack. We should find that the number four cell should not exceed 3.65. Uh, we will then take this pack off of the charger, disassemble it, and reassemble it in parallel to start the next stage of the top balancing process. The battery pack has been charging for about an hour and 10 minutes and you can see that during that time I've had the ISDT BackGo monitors balancing function activated that timer at the very bottom on the left showing one hour and 10 minutes is uh, the indication that it has been both charging and balancing for an hour and 10 minutes. The DALI BMS also engages in cell balancing. One of the indicators I am pleased to see is that um, second from the top left you'll see that there is now a 56 millivolt difference between the cells. That had started out at about 50 millivolts and it quickly climbed to about 70 millivolts and it is now back down to 56 millivolts. So what that shows me is that as we are charging these cells in series uh, up to the target of 3.5 volts per cell or 14 volts for the, va the battery pack voltage that there is balancing taking place. Uh, you can see still that there is some variation not to be expected but that variation should be minimal. At uh, cell number one we've got 3.315 volts that is the lowest voltage cell and the highest voltage cell is number four which is at 3.37 zero volts presently. I anticipate that charging this will take many more hours as it's uh, at about a 53 52 percent state of charge right now and is still only uh, allowing 3.2 amps in coming from the benchtop power supply. Uh, it's going to take some time but we'll carefully monitor it but uh, as of this update I'm, I'm pleased to see that the uh, variation between the individual cells is dropping again showing that the cell balancing functions of both the ISDT backo battery monitor and the Delhi BMS are in fact working to help balance those cells. Okay the battery pack has been charging for about an hour and 40 minutes and now that I'm quite comfortable that everything is working properly as far as the BMS is concerned and the uh, ISDT backgo monitor, I've decided to crank up the amperage uh, to the full capacity on the benchtop charger. And you'll see now that we're approaching uh, 6.89 or so amps, 96 watts, and uh, a target of approximately 14 volts. It's showing 13.98 right now. So watching uh, as far as individual cell behavior is concerned we can see that we're at approximately a 56 millivolt difference between cell number one and cell number four. The battery pack is approximately 55 56 percent fully charged at this point uh, so again we have ramped up the amperage to the fullest extent of this 10 amp benchtop power supply and we will leave it in this mode for as long as it takes for the amperage to drop to zero and the pack achieving a value of 14 volt state of charge uh, again, we'll be carefully monitoring, particularly cell number four, to make sure that it does not exceed 3.65 volts, which would be the safe threshold for state of charge for any one cell in the 4S pack. Thanks for joining me for today's video. 
If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.